Welcome to Cooking with Sonic Blue, and guess what? I got a heck of a recipe for you to try out because I haven't yet tried it out, and I'm eager to try this out, and so is everybody in the house because we haven't eaten yet, and it is 1.48 in the friggin' morning. Uh, no joke, this is 1.48 a.m. See? A.m. And we're just making dinner. Glad you can join us because tonight we're going to be doing shrimp tacos. Look at that shrimp. We stood here and peeled two full bags of shrimp, and we sliced them in half so that you're left with small, tiny pieces like that. And what we're going to do is we're going to make this with our own homemade white sauce that normally would have cilantro in it, but they were all out of cilantro at Kroger. Can you believe it? All out of cilantro. Not one single bushel. I could probably maybe pick up a leaf or two here and there, but that was it. The closest My. thing that I could come was mushroom greens, and you don't want to use mushrooms. My greens. word, no cilantro? No cilantro whatsoever. It must be a cilantro shortage or something. Wow. So anyway, to make our white sauce, what we're going to do is take 32 ounces of plain white yogurt. No vanilla, nothing flavored in it, no strawberry, no cherry, no banana, no nothing in that yogurt. That's plain as plain can be. And I made sure to get the non-fat variety. For you, mostly. Yeah. So we're going to make it in that bowl. So take your plain white yogurt. And slop it everywhere. It got slopped. What? It got slopped. He got sloppy. Slopped. He got did sloppy. I the really? lid? Yes, 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 I did. These make excellent storage tanks. Oh, yes. So we're going to store this something in we there. Keep all, we keep all storage containers. Recycle. Reuse. Yeah. Reduce. Reduce. Reuse. Recycle. Now we're going to take our sour cream. Sour cream? This is 32 ounces of sal cream. See, in order to make your white sauce, you can half, you can cut this uh, amount in half and make 16 ounces and 16 ounces of each sour cream and yogurt. But we're doubling up because there's a lot of hungry people here, and there's going to be a lot of hungry people for this white sauce that you can use in practically anything regarding seafood, and it is a very light seafood at that, and it is quite light. It is very white because, hence the name, white sauce. You're using sour cream and plain yogurt. And now it's time for tube number two. Tube number two? Tube number two. Why am I talking like I'm from Scandinavia? I don't know. Probably because I have a Scandinavian character in mind once I get a moose. As long as he's not like the Swedish chef, we're going to be fine. No, he won't be the Swedish chef. Board, board, board. We already did the board, board thing. So yeah, we made a big mess during that, didn't we? Yes, we did. I'm gonna stir. Okay. Yeah, very, very carefully stirring that, and now we are going to add our seasonings. Let's start with a quarter, actually half a teaspoon, because you're doubling up. Half a teaspoon. That's a little bit more than half, but that's okay. Hey, a little pepper never hurt anyone. Black pepper. And of course your salt. Half a teaspoon there. Should be good. Half a teaspoon of ground cumin. Cumin, cumin, cumin. Okay, that's like a full teaspoon, but I love cumin. Who doesn't? I mean, look at the smell. I mean, it smells so good. Look at the smell. Look at the smell. That was a very good smell. Do you see it? Yes! It is a very beautiful smell. Did you see it just walking through the air? It just, it did. It just like kind of soared right through the air as we were sprinkling that in. Anyway, half a teaspoon of paprika. And yes, it is literally 1.54 in the morning. We are tired. We are hungry. And now here goes a quarter teaspoon of blackening spice. No. We're using Zatarans. Zatarans blackening. Now what? comes in a normal thing of blackening if you don't really have it at home. Basically what you're looking at is paprika, which you know also comes in uh, blackening spice, and uh, cayenne pepper, basically a lot of the red stuff, chili powder, Okay. and uh, I think there might be extra seasonings here. Well, let's actually look and see exactly what they put in here. Yeah, salt, paprika, cayenne pepper, black pepper, white pepper, chili powder, Monosodium glutamate, ooh, it's got MSG in it. MSG. Ooh. Onion, garlic, and spices. That's what's in blackening spice. But my blackening spice doesn't have MSG. It has paprika, ground cumin. I put some seasoned salt in there a little bit to help break it down. 
Now look at that. That looks good. That is a seasoned white sauce. As you can no, see, the red specks in there. It is divine. Let me tell you, it is very divine. Go ahead and take a dab of that. Let me know what you think. Of course, I'm forgetting the most key element of all. <gasps> One lime. One lime. One lime. Yeah, I don't suggest you using that knife. Well, because that's shrimp on it. Yes. Well, you're not going to get salmonella from shrimp. But so... That's a good thing. Okay, now, what we're going to do is slice up this lime. And this time, we're not going to put it in the Cuisinart. We are going to squeeze it as it comes. Be very oh, careful. That smells good too. And remember what they say: you can never have too much lime. Too much lime. So let's try to slice it in half and squeeze the living daylights out of that lime. Ooh, that's a good squeeze. Did you see that juice come yeah, out? Oh, yeah. ho, ho. love it. Look at that nice lime juice coming down. That's when you know you got a juicy lime. Look at all that juice coming oh, out. Oh, I wish I had a spare lime. I would make up some limeade. That would go a few limes. That would be good for this. Mm -hmm. Then I want that. Yes, it would. Maybe next time. Okay, now once you got all the juice you can out of that one, reach for your second half of your lime. It's raining lime. Hallelujah, it's raining lime. A lime. You want to know the scary thing? I was just thinking about that song too. Not too long ago. Look at all that lime juice. That is perfect. That is absolutely divine lime. A divine lime. Yes, it is. Okay, squeezing the daylights out of that lime until there's nothing left. Get rid of that. Now we're going to take and mix all that beautiful lime juice into your white sauce. And now you're going to taste a little citrusy bite to your it white as well. sauce. Yes. You want to make sure it's all mixed in thoroughly and you want to fold it like so, so that way it ensures it won't go all over the place when you start. Yeah. That also brings what's on the bottom to the top, what's on the top to the bottom, everything gets mixed in in a nice generous and gentle fashion. I've been working in the kitchen mixing my white sauce I've been working in the kitchen just to get this sauce a lot. Oh, I'm gonna use it in my tacos with the shrimp and cheese. I've been working with the kitchen. The kitchen's good to me. Sometimes it helps to have a little song in your head while you're oh, stirring. Yeah. And I and happen that... to make that up. So, let the chef try just how. Try that. Oh, oh, oh. I really outdid myself this time. Oh, oh. Oh, 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 wow. See? Little lime juice, or in this case, a lot of lime juice, makes this white sauce into a divine mixture of mm. spices, lime, yogurt, and sour cream. And like Sonic said earlier, in this kitchen, there's no such thing as too much lime. No, there isn't. And Speaking of too much lime, we're going to have this with lime wedges on the side, Ooh. not only to have for decoration, but the also seasoning. It also, you can use it to squeeze some of the lime juice into your taco. Ooh, you can do this with any fish taco, really. But lime goes great with that. So, we got our white sauce. Let's set that aside. Actually, we're going to set aside a small bit into that bowl. And why are we going to do that? The answer is very simple. Just a little bit. Woo! I had a good chunk of that blackening spice. Kind of clustered together in my throat. <laughs> <coughs> wow. Mm. So I go for another. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Why not? Oh. But it's so good to pass off. Oh, man. Now, why are we extracting a part of our sauce into that small bowl? Well, instead of egg to coat our shrimp, we're going to use some of the sauce to coat it so that we can put our breading. Now, that's smart. Yes, it is. Now, with that breading, you, if you want a more Mexican style, you can probably add, if you've got one of those big shakers of taco seasoning, probably add about a quarter teaspoon to that mixture there. You don't really want to add a full envelope because there is so much sodium in one of those things yeah. that it make it too salty to use. But could, could you put like a little bit of like hot sauce into the little bit of white sauce there? You could do that. You can pretty much add anything you want to after the main mixture is done, but you'll get plenty of spice from the blackening season. Yeah. This, however, would be a good idea. I really don't want to chance it right now, though. But 
if you want to add a little more Mexican to that. Maybe next time we'll try it. I forgot to add the chili powder to that white sauce. So <gasps> what do you say we add it to this instead? That works. Yeah, because I knew I was forgetting something, but then there is chili powder in the blackening seasoning, but there is nothing against putting extra chili powder in your breading. Maybe we should put a little bit in the bigger bowl of white sauce as well and stir that in. Yeah, we can do that too. Let's go ahead and do that. Make up for that little mistake there. And one half teaspoon is all you really need. And that's about it there for that go. can. Nope, there's still oh, more. There's more. Okay. I was just using a small. Uh, now to give that a good shake with the chili powder. And you know what? It would also be good. Give it a touch of Maryland with Old Bay. Ooh. If you can figure out how to open the damn thing. Side. In your breading it goes. Kind of differentiate how much you have in breading compared to how much you're putting in there because there is no real recipe for breading. For breading, just as long as it doesn't overpower and overwhelm it, mm -hmm. just mix that right into your breading. Right there. there you go. And of course, extra paprika. Never hurt anybody. Love paprika. It is so nice and soft. It's a nice soft paprika. There we go. Yeah. Now we got some good breading going. And one of our old roommates would say it's too much. <laughs> you never have too much paprika. All right, now just take a whole handful of that shrimp right from the bowl and make sure they're all rinsed too. Yeah. And we're going to coat all of that shrimp in this wonderful white sauce mixture. There we go. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take all this shrimp that we got when it goes through the breading process and we've run out of bowls to put the shrimp. I'm going to need something of a substitute. Something like this cake pan. Did it again, didn't you? You know, you gotta watch out when you do ca uh, ca camera magic in front of people. We're gonna use that cake pan and to ca to put our breaded shrimp. And I love how beautiful that coats. Now, we're not using egg this time. You might notice that because egg might throw off the flavor in your final, in your final uh, product. acclaim of making this work. In your final product or your final acclaim or whatever you want to call it. Just shake all that out of there, and look at that, look at that beautiful shrimp, all nice and coated, beautifully coated. Yep. Just keep adding more and more in. If you need more breading, add more breading. That is what it's there for. And same for white sauce, I'm sure. Exactly, same thing for white sauce, yes, definitely. So add more shrimp, and make sure you rinse your shrimp first, like we've done. We didn't really show everything of the prep work, but we've uh, basically we've uh, peeled our shrimp, removed the tails, of course the skin around the tails. I mean you can leave the little stubby thing, you know, when you take the casing off the tail you still see the tail there. You can leave that in there too. But uh, just as long as all the outer skin and the outer tail fin is removed so that you're left with the middle and that's the meaty shrimp that you see there. We also cut ours in half to stretch it out just a little bit more. That is true. And it'll help fit into the taco better, too. Mm -hmm. So, what do you say? Use my dry hand and remove this beautiful shrimp from the bowl so that we can make more. What is that? I don't know. It was one of those. It was one of those things. Now, we're going to take all of this wonderful shrimp that's going to go into a fryer. We're going to fry the shrimp. But first, we need to bread it and get it all prepared. But shall we cut until we get everything breaded up? I'll tell you what. Let's do a little magic trick since this kitchen is full of magic. Today, apparently. It is. <laughs> okay, see how beautiful the shrimp came out, too. Oh, bread. yeah, it looks great. It is beautifully coated, not one single bare spot on your shrimp, and that's exactly what this sauce can do, too. It's so thick. It, get, it just grabs onto that breading like there's no tomorrow. Exactly. And don't worry about extra clumps, too, because you can actually add some of that into your taco as well if you wanted to. Ooh, we can also maybe make up some white cookies. We might be able to do that. Okay. Now I'm going to take some more of the shrimp and just repeat the process. Shake a little bit out if you want to at the sauce, and you know that you'll have more sauce to play with with the rest of that shrimp. And just drop that in there, give it a shake. And when you realize that your breading is starting to clump too much to where it won't coat, then that's when you add more breading. 
and do it yet. We want it through. So we're left with a beautifully coated shrimp. We are almost done with coating this, but we can actually hopefully rely on the same magic that brought us that cake pan. So are you ready? Say the magic word with me. Abracadabra! Alakazam! If I don't get more shrimp, then I just don't give a damn. And there you have it. All the shrimp is breaded. Now you might think, what happened with the shrimp? It looks multicolored, like this one's darker than this one. Well, would you believe? Even kitchen magic, you can run out of ingredients. And we ran out of breadcrumbs, so we had to use the next best thing. Cornmeal. It works. So now, that poppin' that you hear is our fry daddy. And we are going to get daddy to fry up some of our shrimp with some nice fresh oil. You know this is going to be kind of interesting, so I'm going to move this back a bit so I can have some counter space to work with. There is no counter space there. Okay, so carefully use the spider here. I'm going to take a few shrimp off the top. Repeat the process of there's so many shrimp you have, and we're going to gently lower it down into our deep fryer. Okay, that looks good. Good enough to eat. Oh well. Oh, that's good. That's fine. Because once the food is in there, it'll start getting hotter too. True. Just drop it down carefully because you want to use the spoon to ease it down because you try dropping these little tiny belly babies into that deep fryer. You'll be experiencing your food in ways you uh, never want to. Ouch! You're going to deep fry your arm if you're uh, careful. Your arm, your fingers, your hand. Very carefully ease that in there. And very careful with the hot oil. You don't want to mess with hot oil. Now, how long would you say these need to be in for? Until they are B B D. Golden, brown, and delicious. delicious. As long as they don't burn too bad, don't come out too dark. You might have to stir them, but once they have been in there for a while and you know you're not going to knock away all that beautiful coating, then you can stir them. And we're just going to put in as much as possible. Probably going to put half of our shrimp. I'm going to finish off with the other half. There we go. All it takes. Just to gently stir it because all of that all that breading, you know, you definitely want to wait until it solidifies a little bit. Actually it looks like it's all coming up. I don't know if that's the cornstarch or the breading or just one, but let's see. Mm -hmm. It looks like it's coming off of there too, so maybe some of it just wasn't on there as good as we thought. But that's okay because it will all come together. Mm -hmm. Okay, what do you say we let this bubble up for a little bit and we'll come over here and get our vegetables. Now, for vegetables using, uh, for vegetables to be used in shrimp tacos, we are going to need diced tomatoes. That would be your lime. There's your green onion. And, voila, lettuce. Already shredded and ready for go. We got lime, green onion, tomato, lettuce. Am I forgetting anything? Keith? How right you are! There it is! Our nacho and taco blend cheese. Alright, so... We got all of our vegetables prepared and we are still waiting for that shrimp to finish. So, come back over here with the spider and we're going to check our shrimp. Doesn't quite look done yet because it looks very, very tender. Now what you want is for that breading, however it stays or however it floats in your fryer. If it starts floating and breaking apart from your shrimp, don't think anything too much bad of it. Don't think any much too bad. Good grammar. Don't think too bad of it. Basically, you win some, you lose some. You can't always be 100% perfect in the kitchen and neither can I. But when that's finished, you'll still get the flavor of your breading. You'll still get the flavor of your shrimp. You'll still get the flavor of your lush, beautiful white sauce. White sauce. White sauce. White sauce. White 
Thanks, last swipe. Maybe in the fridge? Where did it go? Maybe in the fridge? No, it's not in the fridge. Freezer. Freezer? No, it's not in the freezer either. I know. Be the sauce. Be the sauce. Be the sauce. It's on top of my head, isn't it? Uh, I believe so. There's the sauce. I know if I be the sauce, the sauce will come. The sauce still looks good, though. It does, doesn't it? And tastes even better. Wait till you folks at home try that sauce, too. And all it takes, and you don't even need kitchen magic in order to make it happen, you can do it just like I showed you. There you have it. We've got, we're getting a couple of good looking pieces in there. Yeah, a few of them here and there, but you really wanted to try and exercise perfection, especially in the kitchen, but a lot of the time it doesn't happen that way, so you take what you got and mm -hmm. you live with your results. And you know what not to do next time. And I know not to put shrimp in the deep fryer where you only have one temperature setting. Especially this, because it's taking too long to get all this out of there. And I and I can vouch, I did ask Sonic if he wants to do it in the uh, fry daddy or on the stove top. And I said, no, let's do it in the fry daddy. I did not think that this was going to happen, but it did. So next time, I'm using the stove top. So what do you say? I show everybody how to open up the cheese. There's a little bit I of a think, tear right I here. think they know how to open cheese, Sonic. And you just pull it, like, very carefully. Now, are you ready for a countdown? One, two, three, pull. Let's see that one more time in slow motion. See how easy it is? And it's... Very, very convenient to have cheese in a bag already shredded for you. Mm -hmm. It takes all of the stress of having to shred it yourself. And all that elbow grease. I know. I think my elbow is still squeaky from last time. Well, if my elbow is in good condition, it's my back that ain't. Well, shall we, so, shall we poof this shrimp done? Let us poof this shrimp done. Okay. There we go. The hassle of frying all that shrimp has finally paid off. And now, it's time to get our tortillas, which we already have here. And brand new packages of tortillas. And remember my trick on steaming tortillas. We're going to take flour tortillas. And we are going to put these tortillas in the microwave oven. We're going to start the first package. You don't really want to do both unless you have the room for it. So, take it into the microwave, opening up just a little bit, just enough for airflow. And what the hell? I think we have enough for both. Oh, let's see. Remember, since we're doing two packages, 45 seconds should be plenty full. 45 would be plenty for both of these. Oh, we will check. Sure. Now, time cook that 45 seconds for both packages of flour tortillas. Now, we're using the flour uh, soft taco tortillas. <clears throat> and now, let us just go over the checklist to make sure we have everything. We have our lettuce, tomato, green onion, lime, cheese, white sauce, shrimp, and tortillas. And that's all you really need to make your excellent shrimp tacos. It could be a little more excellent. But, you know... If we had cilantro. If we had cilantro, and if that didn't fall apart. Yeah. But sometimes, some things can't be helped. It might look like you just dug it out of the beach. But really, we could give it a name. We can give it... Beach Color Tacos. No. No. Beachfront. Beachfront. Beachfront Tacos. Ooh, you know it would be this... Shrimp beautiful. on the Beachfront. That's what we'll call it. We're going to call this dish Shrimp on the Beachfront Tacos. Shrimp Tacos on the Beachfront. Because notice that, this, that the uh, breading kind of fell apart and made it look like sand on the beach. Mm -hmm. Now, 45 seconds wasn't quite long enough to steam these guys, so we're going to let it in for an additional 25 seconds just to get it nice and steamy. Anyway, now that's starting to steam up. Good. Nice and steamy, huh? Oh yes, steamy and warm. 
This will ensure that your tortillas won't fall apart when you put them together. And they're actually big enough. These are actually fajita slash. These are really big soft tacos. Yeah, really. So you can make burrito out of these. You can that. make burritos out of these. We can make little shrimp burritos. You can actually make these into burritos if you want to, if your tortillas are big enough. So let us start with some shrimp. And to do this, you might notice that you've got a lot of oil accumulation down there. But we do this as best as we can. Take a spoonful of shrimp. Too much of the oil there because the less that goes into your bloodstream, the better it is for you. Mm -hmm. This is shrimp on the shrimp tacos on the beachfront, or shrimp mini burritos on the beachfront. So, who's going to be our guinea pig today? Me. You? You will be the guinea pig. So, Adrian just has to put a couple off to the side for him. Of course. Okay. Okay, so just enough to, and that was a little bit too much, but... Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Because remember, you got a lot of other ingredients going mm -hmm. into it, too. So if you want to use it as a soft taco, then go ahead and pile that in there. About like that much. And grab your lettuce. Put that in there. And you can eat this as a soft taco if you want to. That's a big soft taco, so I'm probably going to roll mine into burritos. Here's your tomato. Shot of green onion. And not to forget, slime. Oop, yep, yeah, that's it. Let's figure something out. We need one of these. So we don't lose it in that. Exactly. So we're gonna take a little white sauce. Just right pop it right across across up there. there. There is a lot of white sauce to go around. There is plenty of it. Anytime you do fish style burritos or tacos, make this white sauce because it will go good with your recipe. And then if you want to fold it into a burrito, fold it up into a burrito. Let's see if I can actually do that and fold it into a mini burrito here. Because these tortillas are big enough, I can actually do that. I always kept one side open for burritos. Yeah, I like closing mine. Let's see. Oh, the white sauce is good already. It's still good. But let's see how everything else is. Ooh! You forgot something. I forgot the garnish. Well, since there's plenty of lime in the sauce, mm -hmm. a little extra lime couldn't hurt. And, and we can also eat this with hot sauce. And we've said it before, I'll we'll say it again. There's never too much lime. So, opinion, after you get finished this mouthful. It's good, but I'm missing the cheese. <sighs> I forgot to add cheese to this one. Oh well. Oh well. So this one doesn't have cheese. But other than not having cheese, how is it? It was really amazing. Even though we botched up on making the shrimp, no matter. It's still good. What your guests don't know won't kill them. But at least try to make good breaded shrimp. But if you can't do that, not everybody's perfect. I mean, look at me. I just botched up a whole plate of shrimp and made it taste good. But that's what matters the most in your in your cooking. All that matters is the taste is alright, and it tastes more than alright. It tastes fabulous. And a little cheating by going with popcorn shrimp doesn't hurt either. Mm. Now, for an extra added flavor, you can actually add avocado to these, which would be really good, but... And this time of year, it's kind of expensive, too. Yeah. So, from all of us here at Opop Pet Show and Cooking with Sonic Glitch, to all of you out there, I hope your meals turn out a lot better than the way that looks. So... Until next time, always keep that food fresh, and if you're not cooking good, you're not eating good. Take care, everybody. Glad you can join us, because tonight we're going to be doing... What are we doing? It's so late, I forgot what I was doing. Shrimp tacos! <laughs> Blue for time. <laughs> okay. Three, Three, two, one. Do we have everything? Yes, no, maybe some. Ooh, there's a couple right there. Looks like we're cutting out dirt. Yeah.
Let's make a nice sand castle out of this shrimp. Shrimpy sand castles. Interesting dish. You can do that by putting all of your breaded shrimp in a fry daddy and cook it at excessive heat for a long time and then just pull everything out. There you go. There's going to be a lot of lost breading in there, so I'm not yeah. going to be playing with that all day. Especially if it has. I want to eat. We all want to eat. So hopefully now we've learned our lesson not to do in the Or next time. That's since we're hungry and we want to do this as a cooking show, we're going to do that same mistake again. We're going to put it right in the deep fryer when we said not to. Why? Because we're already here. Might as well finish out what we've done. Mm -hmm. You know, I should totally blow smoke next time I do a camera magic thing and just go... Like this. It didn't come out very well. No, it didn't. Fabulous.